Hello guys. This is Void King I'm here to bring you fanfiction that will brighten your day, but before we start be sure to like and subscribe for more. CH2. Attack and identity revealed two days had passed since Ichigo left, and since then Rimuru had no idea what had happened in Soul Society. Everything was under control except for, pervert, leave this house now. You, I brought you here since I saw you on the road, and you're not even gonna thank me? Pervert. Nozomi and Khan had been arguing for about 10 minutes now, and Rimuru had enough of that, so he decided to go out for a bit. Nozomi, Khan, I'll go out for a bit. Is there anything you two would like me to buy? Rimuru asked. Then I'll have that thing called soda, Nozomi said. Then I'll have a. All right, I know what you want, Khan. I'll be back in a few hours, Rimuru said and walked towards the door. Khan, don't let anyone take Nozomi without my permission, Rimuru said before walking outside. While walking outside, he could hear Khan continuing his facade. Asterisk 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 night had fallen, and Rimuru had yet to return. By that time, when Rimuru was out of the house, someone came to his house. Ding dong, I'm coming. Khan, who was in Ichigo's body, rushed off to see who that was. He was expecting Rimuru, who had left the house, but once he opened the door, he was greeted by three individuals. Two of whom were familiar to him because those two were lieutenants from Soul Society, but the other one he didn't know. Who might you be? I take it you are Korosaki Ichigo San's soul pill. I see you've heard of me, huh? Aren't you guys? We are here from Seireidii. We understand that you have a Shinigami named Kujo Nozomi here and have come to take her into our care. Kujo Nozomi? Take her into care? Khan remembered the words of Rimuru, or more specifically, his orders to him, don't let anyone take Nozomi without my permission. Ah, sorry, but there's no one named Nozomi here. Playing a fool won't help. Where is she? Nozomi, run, get out of here, Khan yelled, and Nozomi, who was on the second floor of the house, heard it and immediately ran off. The three heard a noise from upstairs and immediately ran off to where Nozomi was, but before they could arrive, she was already gone. She escaped. The two used Shunpo to chase Nozomi. This is bad, 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 Khan took off running and chased after Nozomi. Asterisk 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 meanwhile, Rimuru was walking on the street. My arms hurt. I didn't expect those punks to chase me all day long. That Ichigo should have chosen his enemies. Even I'm getting dragged into his problems. You might be asking what happened to Rimuru. Well, to make it simple, he had been chased all over the place, and that left Rimuru no choice but to fight them all. On his way, he saw a person with spiky orange hair. Huh, isn't that Khan? Rimuru looked ahead and saw that Nozomi was being chased by two Shinigami. What in the world? Rimuru was confused, but he ran off to where Nozomi and the two Shinigami were going. He took out Tempest since he had a feeling that he would need it. Asterisk 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 Nozomi ran off to an abandoned factory after she lost the two Shinigami who were chasing her. She stopped running to catch her breath and looked at her surroundings. Hey, are you alright? Khan was running towards Nozomi, but before he could reach her, he was struck by three lights that sealed his movement. You struggling is in vain, did you truly think you could escape me? Nozomi was frightened by the person who was in front of her. The person tried to make her lose consciousness by using his silver cane to strike the girl's abdomen, but a light arrow interrupted him. I won't move if I were you, a man with glasses appeared, and he was holding a bow made of light. Forcing a girl to go with you against her will isn't what I'd call good behavior. Yururu Ishida, Khan said while Nozomi was also being cornered by the other two soul reapers. Hado number 4. Biakurai. A lightning bolt appeared from the guy's cane and went towards Uryu, but before the lightning could reach Uryu, he disappeared. Hirankyaku. Dot are you a Quincy? It seems that my humble group has attracted considerable interest. I am not interested in you, but I'd appreciate you not bringing your quarrels to this town. Uryu said, and a white blast of energy appeared from behind the guy. Boom, did we get him? Chad said as he landed next to Uryu. I think so. Attacking from behind is rather rude, don't you both think? Chad and Uryu looked in the direction of the voice and saw the man standing on top of one of the buildings. We don't have much time to play. Fall to madness, Reiku. His silver cane transformed into a double-headed bulge with red markings on the blades. He spun his now-released Shinkai, and in an instant, Uryu and Chad were cut, but the injuries were not fatal. You both can still draw breath. It's his movement, it's not just that he moves too fast, but the way he did before. It's almost as if the moment he moved, he was phased out of reality, Uryu thought while trying to stop the bleeding of his wounds. 
I do apologize if it seems as if I'm toying with your lives. I will let it end now. Hado number 4 Biakurai. Once again, lightning came out of the guy's palm and made its way towards Uryu and Chad, but before it could reach them, a yellow energy shielded them. Ishida-kun, Sato-kun, Inoue ran over to her two injured friends. Oh, another interesting person appeared. Before he could continue his words, the two Shinigami appeared with Nozomi in their hands. Let me go, Nozomi said weakly, sorry, but no can do. If she said to let her go, let her go. A voice rang out, and in the next instant, Nozomi was in another person's hands. And you might be? The name is Rimuru, Korosaki Rimuru. Rimuru introduced himself while carrying Nozomi in his left hand and holding his black katana in his right. CH3. Goal, the name is Rimuru, Korosaki Rimuru. Rimuru introduced himself while carrying Nozomi in his left arm and holding his black katana in his right. Korosaki Rimuru. Ah. You're Korosaki Ichigo san's twin brother. I see. But this matter doesn't concern you, so please hand Nozomi over to us, the guy said. Rimuru noticed that Nozomi tightened her grip on Rimuru's shirt. Sorry, but I'm selfish, and I made a promise that I won't share my possession with some random guy, Rimuru said as he looked at the man. I see. So I have to resolve this using force. Well, it's fine. The guy then spun his shinkai, and the time around them stopped. HMPH. A young one who doesn't even know his place. Sorry, but we don't have any use for you, Korosaki Rimuru, he swung his shinkai, attempting to cut Rimuru, but something unexpected happened. The blade of his shinkai was met with a katana that had a black blade. What? Hmm. Time stop. I have to say, for a lower being like you to have this kind of power is quite amazing, Rimuru said as he applied more force on his katana and swung it towards his enemy. ACKK. Once Rimuru swung his katana, Everything around started to move again, and Inoue and the two Shinigami were surprised since their master was sent flying. I told you, didn't I? I'm selfish, and I don't like to leave my profession to someone who I didn't even know. And you two should stop hiding, Ichigo, Rukia, Rimuru said, and Ichigo and Rukia jumped down from the sky. We're not hiding, and more importantly, what is going on here, and why are you able to fight a soul reaper? Ichigo started to bombard Rimuru with tons of questions, but Rimuru only replied with, I'll answer your questions later. The man that Rimuru sent flying came back and looked at Ichigo and Rimuru. That was unexpected. What are you? No, who are you, Korosaki Rimuru? I should be the one asking that. Who are you? And Korosaki Ichigo, you have returned. I admit I did not expect it. Answer my brother's question. Who are you? I see, this must be Shihu and Yoruichi's work. Are you deaf or something? Ichigo yelled, and he was getting irritated since the guy just kept ignoring their questions. I will grant that with her help, you could conceivably have escaped if she were to risk her life for you, of course. Oh I I, we ask you, who the hell you are? Ah, both of you, do kindly calm down. I am Anaba Keijiruza. I conduct Severed World Research at the Bureau of Research and Development. Severed World Research? You mean you're the one behind everything that's going on, and the one controlling the Rai guy? Rukia asked. What the hell is a Raigai? Is what Rimuru thought. My word, to think that you even know of the Raigai. How splendid. What do you mean, splendid, Ichigo asks. Quite simply, when one spends all their time conducting research as I do, one finds it difficult to be interested in other people, Keijiruza said as he scratched his shinkai against a metal bar and walked slowly. It would seem that you have managed to vastly exceed my expectations. I'm not here to listen to your ramblings, before Ichigo could finish his words, Rimuru interrupted him. Would you guys quit your talk? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Keijiruza, I'll make this easy for you. Leave now, and I will let you live. You will let me live? For a human like you, you are quite cocky. You're no one. Human, you're just an insect that is meant to be crushed. Really? So why did this insect manage to get behind you? What? Ak, before Keijiruza could react. Rimuru swung his sword, sending him to the ground near where Ichigo was. The two Shinigami that were with Keijiruza tried to attack Rimuru, but he parried their strikes with his katana. Ichigo, I'll take care of these two. You take care of that one. Got it. Ichigo dashed straight towards Keijiruza and swung Zanjetsu to attack him, but Keijiruza managed to block it, and he retaliated with an attack of his own, sending Ichigo flying inside a building. Asterisk 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 seeing Ichigo getting blown away by their enemy had me worried since I can feel that he is weakened right now. While I'm busy in my thoughts, the two Shinigami that were in front of me attacked me with their Zanpakuto, 
but I could see their attacks, so I used my katana to block their strikes. You should focus on us rather than be distracted. I'm not distracted, I'm just checking on my brother. I sent a slash towards them, but they managed to block my attack. Fighting two on one is quite hard for me at the moment since almost 95% of my power is sealed, and I can only use 2% of my real power in this human body. If I try to use even more power, there's a chance that my human body won't be able to handle it, and my human body will be disintegrated to ashes. Hado number 31. Shakaho. The female Shinigami used what they called Kido, a red orb of crimson red energy appeared on her palm, and it flew towards me. Seeing that attack, I jumped to avoid it while making sure that Nozomi, who was still in my arms, wouldn't get hit or injured by that attack. You're wide open. While being in the air, the other Shinigami appeared above me and struck down his katana. Sorry, but you're too slow. Hellflare, what the? My Hellflare hits the Shinigami and he was surrounded by a dome of black fire. Attacking using Hellflare almost depleted my energy, even though I toned down its power to the lowest possible. After the black flames disappeared, the Shinigami who got hit by my Hellflare fell down to the ground, and his female companion ran towards him to help him. Asterisk 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 with Ichigo, he was struggling against Keijiruza because of his unstable Ryatsu. In deference to the strength of the one who drove eyes into his knees, I am refraining from using petty tricks. But is this all the power you can muster now? Keijiruza aks while slowly walking towards Ichigo. What? Show me. Surely you have something left in reserve. Substitute Shinigami. Get off your high horse, old man. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Ichigo stood up and placed his left hand on his face. Wait, Ichigo. Rukia warned Ichigo, but he ignored her and proceeded to use his hollow power. Let's do this. A white bone mask with two black stripes appeared on his face. Without wasting any more time, he dashed straight towards Keijiruza and sent multiple strikes, but they were all blocked by Keijiruza. Not even a minute had passed since he put on his mask, and Ichigo could feel that his Ryatsu was unstable, and he wouldn't be able to keep the mask on for a long time. I've got to settle this in one blow. Ichigo swung his katana towards Keijiruza and sent him flying towards the ground. Using this moment, Ichigo used Shunpo to go behind Keijiruza and attempted to attack and end him, but Keijiruza was fast enough to dodge his attack. Getsuga Tenshao. Ichigo used his most powerful attack towards Keijiruza, and his attack resulted in an explosion that broke the surrounding buildings. Don't underestimate me, Keijiruza said as he deflected Ichigo's Getsuga Tenshao. What? Ichigo couldn't hide his surprised expression since he didn't expect Keijiruza to deflect his most powerful attack. Furthermore, since his Getsuga Tenshao was released during his Bankai and Hollow State. In this the peak of your power? Ha 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 ha, Keijiruza taunted. Ichigo didn't waste any more time and attacked Keijiruza again since he knew that at any moment, his mask might break, and he needed to defeat Keijiruza right now. Substitute Shinigami, it seems that I have grossly overestimated your abilities. Or is it that your spiritual power has diminished even more than I expected? Shut up. I'm afraid that in your current state, you pose no further interest to me as a scientist. But maybe, perhaps your brother can be quite interesting, Keijiruza said and used the back of his Shinkai to attack Ichigo from behind. Keijiruza saw that after his attack, Ichigo's mask had cracked and didn't waste any time. He delivered another attack that cut Ichigo's right shoulder and sent him flying outside of the building. Ichigo. Rukia rushed towards Ichigo's side with a worried expression. How convenient. You people could potentially interfere with my plans. I will end this here. Before he could finish his sentence, he was struck by a long sword, and that sword belonged to Renji. You. A-C-K-K, Keijiruza looked at the source of the voice, and he saw his two Raigai had a lot of injuries, and their clothes had been burnt. Looks like you're the only one left, Rimuru said and tried to cut Keijiruza in half, but he managed to dodge and landed next to his companions. You, imbeciles, you think you could stop me alone? Calling me stupid is quite rude, you know, and since when did you assume that I'm alone? His right, he's not alone. Another voice rang out, and it belonged to the captain of the 10th squad, Toshiro Hitsugaya. You, give me that girl. Keijiruza tried to rush towards Rimuru in an attempt to get Nozomi off of his hands, but a pink petal of cherry blossom stopped his pursuit. Tisk, they just keep coming out of the woodwork. Nisama. Bukuya, such a shameful defeat, Kurosaki Ichigo? Shut up. And you, Kurosaki Rimuru, we would like you to explain yourself later, Bukuya said to Rimuru, who only gave him a glance before returning his gaze back to Keijiruza. Wait, you guys are the real thing, right? Ichigo asks. 
Well, duh. Renji replied, and it ain't just us. With Renji's words, multiple people arrived from captain to lieutenant rank, and Ichigo knew all of them. You're all here. The raw materials. What interesting things you've been doing. Forgetting your place, for one. Well, if it isn't Captain Kuritsuchi, you've graced us with your presence sooner than I expected. You have been terribly late with your report, don't you think? Thanks to you, I've stuck rescuing this worthless bunch when I have far better things to do. Quite the thankless job. I look forward to paying you back for it. A million times over, Captain Mayuri said while tilting his head to the right, making him look like a yandere. Most amusing, sir. You appear to believe that you've won, but I assure you, you're mistaken. Keijiruza said while deactivating his Shinkai back to a cane. This is merely a temporary withdrawal. Seeing that he's surrounded, Keijiruza decided to retreat for now. Seeing that Keijiruza was about to retreat, Ichigo tried to stop him, but Rimuru motioned his hand towards Ichigo to stop him from doing anything. Tell me, Keijiruza, what is your goal, and why are you aiming for Nozomi? Rimuru asked while still holding the girl in his arms. Keijiruza then looked back at Rimuru and spoke. My goal, huh? Well, I wanted to demonstrate my true power to all of you once I've reclaimed Nozomi. Your true power? And after that, the soul society and the human world will both fall under my control. Ha ha ha, quite a funny joke, Rimuru said. Joke? You really think that you could control the human world while I'm here? Hmm, so you're saying that as long as you're alive, the human world will not fall into my hands. Very well, I will keep in mind your existence. I look forward to our next meeting, Korosaki Rimuru, Keijiruza said while entering the Senkaimon. Well, that ended well. Oi Ichigo, meet me at home tomorrow, Rimuru said as a blue magic circle appeared under his feet, and he disappeared from everyone's sight. Just what did he just do? Rukia asks. I don't know, and I have a lot of questions too, Ichigo replied.